The job of a singer is a unique responsibility. Being a singer means you're going to throw your voice either to the creator or to the people. When emotions of the people or your emotions are running high, either devastation or sadness, or on the other side, you have joyfulness and happiness and all everything, all the emotions in between. The singer's responsibility is to send that voice. When words don't suffice, maybe the song does. I chose some awesome singers. John Eagle Shield Jr. is an awesome singer, and he wanted to do his great-grandfather songs, and that's what he did. And along with him are his Hunka brothers, Spencer and Kendall Little Owl. I chose them because I trust them, and they would show respect to these songs. That's, that's one thing I wanted to get from my singers that sang on this project is, they show a respect to the song. When they show a respect to the song, they show respect to those men and women that kept these songs. So Spencer and Kendall are all, and Spencer's uh, wife, Connie Tobacco, she was just awesome. Awesome singing, uh, awesome Wichaglata, uh, awesome woman singer. And then I uh, chose um, my nephew, who I have a lot of respect for because his mind's like a sponge right now. He wants to take in everything, everything that we teach him, not only from me, but from grandfathers and uncles and his brothers around the drum. He's taking in everything and wants to, wants to learn and wants to sing. When my, my nephew Cody Washizi is on the uh, recording, as well as uh, Jaron Elk, he's a uh, Ihunktua Dakota, from the cannibal community, but I chose Jaron because once again, I know he shows respect to this way of life, these songs and these singers, he have uh, reverence towards this. And then uh, my final singer was uh, Miss Kelsey Two Shields, who is a descendant of Two Shields, who's in the book. She has an awesome voice and she, she once again, she's not afraid to try these and I always encourage other singers, don't be afraid to use your language. If you don't use your language, we lose it. So those are the singers, including myself, that we chose to sing on this um, project. Densmore didn't allow the singers to use a drum during the recording because it would overload the system and it wouldn't be a very good recording after that. So she wanted voices, voices. But what she did was she gave the singers uh, a wooden box and a stick to use. But um, one of the singers, Shooter, Okute, he used a frying pan and you can hear in his voice that he's, a, he's out there. He's, he means what he says and says what he means. <laughs> Yeah, he, was, he was an awesome singer. Out of that, I thought, well, maybe we, we won't use uh, drums. You know, there's a couple songs we do use the drum, but most of the time we just, uh, we just hit the rim, hit the rim, um, kind of out of respect to those original recordings. There are about 240 songs or so in the book that were recorded. Some of the recordings were lost, but we touched on about 75 of them. Something came over these singers where they're saying, we need to do them all. We need to do every single one of them. After all the, the devastation that happened amongst the Lakota, not, not only Lakota, but all indigenous races on this place. Some people call Turtle Island. We know it as Makoche Washte, the, the good land. All the devastation, 
the genocide, the killing of cultures, the killing of our food supply, our way of life. After all that, you go back and look, Francis Densmore recording of these men was probably one time where white man's technology served us in a good way. Because now I can listen to my grandfathers and grandmothers from 120 years ago and use the little bit that they left us. And maybe it's just a foundation. Maybe it's just a foundation that we build upon to go forward.